Hey everyone, Houston Math Prep here. We want to introduce to you some information about sets and set operations. So a set is a well-defined collection of objects. That just means we don't want there to be any ambiguity or any doubt as to what is in our set and what is not in our set. The objects in our set are called the elements of the set or the members of the set. They belong to the set. So here I've got two sets. I've got a set called A and a set called B. It's very common that we name sets using capital letters, usually starting at the beginning of the alphabet, but we can really start anywhere we want. Usually capital letters, though, are used to denote sets so that we can refer to them easily and not have to write out an entire description to refer to the set. So if I just say set A, you know I'm talking about weekdays, and if I say set B, you know I'm talking about weekends without me having to write that out or describe it fully. You can tell that we're denoting a set, a list of things in mathematics. We use the curly braces to show here what we have as elements in our set, and our elements are separated by commas inside of the curly braces. Another way that we might represent these sets instead of writing them out one element at a time is we might use what's called set builder notation. So remember we said set A was going to be the weekdays, and set B is going to be our weekend days. Here are set A in set builder notation. We have our curly brace to start the set, and then we say X. So this is the set of all things we're calling X. This line tells us that the rule for X is coming after. So the set of all things we'll call X such that X is a weekday. Our set B is just defined as all objects such that our object is a weekend day. So instead of listing the elements, we might use set builder notation. That's very handy, especially if the set has a lot of elements in it and we don't want to have to list them all out individually. If we want to talk about something being an element in a particular set, then we'll use this little rounded E looking object. So this says that Thursday is an element of A. It is in set A. You can see that here. Obviously, Thursday is a weekday. Thursday is, if we have the is an element of with a slash through it, that's the same as like not equal. So here we are not an element. Thursday is not an element of set B when we have the slash through it. Let's say we define two other sets. Let's say I define the days that I have class are set C, and I have class on Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday each week. And let's say that you, you probably don't have class these days, but I'm just making something up. Days that you have class, let's say, are set D, and those are Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday. So we might talk about the days that we both have class, and that's called an intersection. So here we read this notation as C intersect D, or the intersection of sets C and D. And the intersection is simply all of the elements that are in both set C and set D. To be in the intersection of something, you need to be in both sets. So if I want to figure out what the intersection of sets C and D are, I look for any day that is in both lists. I notice that Monday is in both lists, and I also should notice that Friday is in both lists, and those are the elements in both lists. So we would say the intersection of sets C and D is Monday and Friday. Those are the elements. The union, so we represent this the other way. This looks like a U, right, instead of an upside down U. So this is the union of sets C and D. And a union is when you have an element in at least one of the sets. So it's in either set C or it's in D, or it could be in both, right? As long as it's in at least one of the sets that we're listing here. So if we think about all of the elements here, all of the days that are in either C or D or both, we just look for anything that is named in the collection here. So Monday is named, Tuesday is named here, Wednesday is named here, Thursday is in C, so it counts. Friday is in D and C. Being in both is okay too. Saturday, the only thing that we don't have is Sunday, so it looks like Monday through Saturday are the elements in our C union D. Remember, it's just required to be in at least one of them. It can be in both. Let's go back to our sets A and B, where A is the set of all weekdays and B is the set of all weekend days. So we want to think about our intersections and unions using these two sets. So here this says, what is the intersection of A and B? In other words, what elements are in both A and in set B? Well. Uh, these are all weekdays and these are weekend days, so there actually aren't any elements that are in both of the sets. 
all of Monday through Fridays in A, Saturday, Sundays in B, so there are no elements actually in both of the sets. So we would have no elements in this A intersect B, the intersection of A and B. When we have no elements in a set, we call that the empty set. We write it with a circle with a little diagonal slash through it. That's the notation for the empty set, and that's the set that just doesn't have any elements in it. So if you say, you know, what elements are in both? Well, there are none, so that answer is the empty set. Another way that we'll say that sets have no overlapping elements is that we'll say the sets are disjoint if they have no elements in common. Let's look at this bottom one now. We have a union B. So the union, remember, that just means it needs to be in one or the other, or it can be in both. So if it can be in one or the other, that means all the weekdays are going to count. That means all the weekend days are going to count as well. And that means everything that we could possibly consider, right? All seven days of the week are going to fit in the union here. When we talk about a set that has every possible element that we could be considering in that moment, we call that the universal set. So because A union B has all seven days of the week, that's considered our universal set for this type of a situation. Going back to our sets C and D, we want to illustrate the complement. So the complement is usually denoted with a little apostrophe next to the set name. So this is actually read here, the complement of set C, and the complement of a set is simply all elements in the universal set. So think about all the things we could possibly be talking about. What of those objects are not in set C? And since our universal set is days of the week, when I look at set C, I think about, well, what are the days of the week that are not in set C? I notice I don't have class on Wednesday. I also don't have class on Saturday or Sunday. So my C complement is going to be Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. If I look at D complement, remember D is the days that you have class. So D complement would be thought of as the days that you do not have class. In other words, what days are not in set D. And in that case, you don't have class on Tuesday, Thursday, and also on Sunday, according to my list here. The last basic thing we want to introduce you to with sets and set operations is called a subset. So we have some set E is a subset of another set F if any element in E is also an F. So everything in this one is also in this one. It kind of fits inside of it, so to speak. Then that means that E is a subset of F. This looks similar to like a less than equal to, but you'll notice it's actually around U. So this says E is a subset of F. In other words, everything in E is also in F. So my universal set, all of the objects that we're thinking of are just all the days of the week. Remember, A was my set of all weekdays, B was my set of the weekend days, C that was the set of days I had class, and D that was the set of days that I said you had class, whether I was telling the truth or not, I suppose. So just illustrating some of this subset stuff here, this says that C is a subset of A. Is C a subset of A? It is, right? Because Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, and Friday, all of those elements are also in set A. Monday is an A, Tuesday is an A, Thursday is an A, and Friday is an A. So everything in C is also an A, and we say C is a subset of A. We can also talk about something not being a subset of another set, like we said something was not an element of a set. So here if we put a slash through the subset symbol, this says that D is not a subset of A. Okay, if we think about D being Monday, Wednesday, Friday, Saturday, Monday is an A, Wednesday is an A, Friday is an A, but Saturday is not an A. So many of the elements of D are an A, but not all of them. And since not all of them are also an A, then we say that D is not a subset of A. One little additional thing that we'll mention is that the empty set is a subset of any set, technically we think of it that way, because when we say something is a subset, we say any of its elements are also in this other set. And since the empty set has no elements that can be missing from another set, then technically all of its elements are in any other set that we look at, right? D failed to be a subset of A because we had Saturday in here and it wasn't in A. And so if we were going to say the empty set is not a subset of some other thing, there would have to be something in the empty set that was missing in the other one. And since there's nothing in the empty set, then we can't have that happen. So the empty set is considered to be a subset of anything, of A, B, C, D, U, any set that we can think of. Okay, everyone, hopefully this helps you with sets and set operations, getting started with some of these symbols and how to interpret them. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.